This very well could be the most enlightening or insane video you've ever witnessed. I'll even include the most horrific experience I've ever had, an encounter with a demon on an acid trip. But before we get to the entity aspect, let me show you how deep this rabbit hole goes. Listen here, I got two pills. The red pill, which is pure, unadulterated insanity, and the blue pill, which will let you hold on to a structured system. Um... What the f***? So let me eliminate the form of denial that is, it's just a chemical reaction, and or it's just a drug frying people's brain, and this is important context for the rest of the video, since I believe these entities to be of the real reality, and in order to prove that, let me show you the illusion that is the world in front of you, and I'll include a story of when I broke down the illusion through meditation about drugs at the end of this segment, so that story will dismiss the it's just drugs part. Mythical experiences in prehistory. But I freaking up our talking these mushrooms and I had an encounter with the Lord. Write that down, write that down! <laughs> but how about the chemical reaction part? Well, I have some bad news. All of life is a chemical reaction. Taking pictures of what people that stop the, what about by. What the illegal drugs you do in your garage? Oh, there's no illegal drugs property. in my garage. Oh, yes, there yeah. is, and there's evidence of it. Hello what? there. Woo, woo. Hello, darling. There's no illegal drugs in my property. Hello, sweetheart. Oh, yes, you know See, that just produced dopamine in your head. Strange, isn't it? Also, let's not forget about the huge debate on if this dress was white and gold or blue and black. To show you how little accuracy we have in our perception, I'll let you know, none of the images after the dress are moving. Also, let's not forget, the color spectrum extends past what we can see. We can only hear certain frequencies, and you can't see the radio waves that are going through the very air around you right now. There is more to this, I'd like to tell, but this meditation story has to come first. So I've been meditating for years now, and one night a long time ago, as I was in deep meditation, I start to hear this ringing noise. As that sound kept getting more and more intense, my body started to vibrate violently as if I was about to explode out of it. And this freaked me out, so I opened my eyes and in front of me is reality shattered into a million pieces, and it slowly came back together to form my normal point of view of the world. I believe this to be a glimpse behind the curtain. Your brain does a reality threshold test on things, and if it doesn't surpass the threshold then it is assumed to be fake, like your imagination and dreams, and that's how it separates them from reality. And oftentimes you can't tell when you are in a dream, so is it really that crazy to believe that this very well could be a dream as well? And let's not forget, the most powerful psychedelic experiences are reported to feel more real than real life. Alright, enough justification for the existence of another reality. Hey, hey, hey bro, this is all an illusion, life is a dream. <laughs> sure, bud. Hey, life is all an illusion. And life is simply a dream. I believe you. Another common report is a feeling of oneness, and the way I perceive it is a little confusing, but I'll explain it in simple terms. So everything is made of atoms, including us, and atoms are energy, so everything is made of energy. And I believe all energy comes from a singular source, you could call it the Big Bang, you could call it God. But it's widely believed that everything came from a singular source, and a good analogy is the sun. So you see the light shining through your window right now. But I also see the light shining through my window. So the beams of light are separate, but they originate from the same source, and just like the sun, it gets colder the farther away you are. Are, but instead of heat, it gets eviler the farther away you are from God. And since we're energy, let's not forget the first law of thermodynamics. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, it can only change forms. So what does that mean when we die? In my eyes, this means we are internally a part of God. Let there be light. Oh thank God, it's just a bear. Yo, get away from that thing. Ah! Alright, you're on your own. Now onto the phenomenon of ego death. And for this, I'd like to explain the nature of duality first. So, your body is in contact with a surface of some sort right now, but you and that surface are separate. Well, the psychedelic entities don't seem to have that complete separation from their environment. They are separate but a part of it. To put this in a real life point of view, it would be like if I was able to phase myself through a wall, which obviously would be a bit hard to navigate, and hence why I believe we aren't fully ready for that. Hey bro, I'ma walk through that wall. Yeah, I doubt it. So from this perspective, God is omnipresent, meaning they are everything including us. So duality just means separation from God, and if you're following what I'm saying, that means we are separate from God to a very high degree as of right now, and hence the evil in the world. Since evil isn't God's will, but the separation from God, this very well can mean we are in a degree of hell as of right now. And I know this one will get some knee-jerk reactions of denial since it's harsh, but really, think about it. In order to survive in this world, things must die. Animals eat each other alive. We have enslaved whole species of animals to be laid to slaughter. And trust me, when I say those are some of the more tame things happening in the world right now, but I'm a firm believer that the gates to hell are locked from the inside. Hey man, do you have a dollar? I'm short for the bus. Here you go, enjoy the ride. Appreciate it, man. 
So what is ego death? Well, just as you'd assume, it is the death of the ego. But what is the ego? Well, the ego is the thing that deludes us to believe there's a separation between us and reality or God. So when you experience ego death, it feels like you are dying since your sense of self is. And if you hold on to your ego as it dies, you'll experience what feels like hell since to hold on to the ego is to hold on to your separation from God. But once you accept the death of your ego, it becomes bliss since you are experiencing union with God. God is reality, reality is consciousness, and consciousness is God. I can't believe I'm dying. I'm not ready to die yet. You have to let go. Okay. But what does it mean to have a big ego? A belief that you're better than others? Maybe a lack of empathy? A need for admiration? Possibly expecting social special treatment? Being self-absorbed and manipulating others? Being a little resistant to criticism? Notice something? These are all traits that hold on to the identity of the self, and I believe to get where these entities are, you must understand the separation between you and alternate reality is your attachment to self. This concept is hard to understand without experiencing the sense in layman terms, it means to let reality flow through you, without judgment or thought. To be completely present, almost to be an observer of emotion and thought, without identifying with them. But this isn't just the only example. Alright, what's a better trait to be? Selfish or selfless? Well, selfless, obviously. Ah, uh, there you go. Now you're getting it. You heard it here first, folks. I came across this odd similarity between all religions while looking at old religious artwork, and I believe this is the key to ascending beyond where we are right now. So I'm going to show you multiple photos from every religion, and I gotta ask, do you see what I do? The halo, also known as the crown, that glowing circle behind their head, which is a sign of enlightenment. But how do we get this halo? Well, something from Eastern religions is these things called chakras. And I believe that circle of light behind their head to be the last chakra, the crown. On psychedelics and many reports, people see entities with the seven chakras, and a good portion of these reports, the people knew nothing of them before the experience. And while there is plenty of other symbols, they aren't worth covering right now. God, forgive them for they know not what they do. So now that you understand all of that, let's talk about what these entities are from multiple religious perspectives. In Islam, they have these things called jinns, which are a lot like humans except they are supernatural spirits that have extraordinary powers. In many Eastern religions, they'll call them divas or maybe gods. In Christianity, they'll call them demons or angels, which on psychedelics, you tend to see eyes, and in Ezekiel in the Bible, they describe a few messengers, which all seem very similar to the psychedelic entities to me. Hey, this trip is getting crazy, man. Do not be afraid. What the hell is even that? Now let's talk about some trip reports that are encounters with these religious figures. And for ease of time, I'm just going to list the ones I found on multiple reports using AI so I can have plausible deniability on the pronunciations. Starting with Shakti, Shiva, Ganesha, Indra, Vishnu, Narsimha, Durga, Kali, Garuda, Yama, Buddha, Manjushri, Seraphim, Ophanim, Metatron, Cherub, Jesus, Mother Mary, Sphinx, Anubis, Thoth, Webwawet, Sobek, Set, Nath, Horus, Hathor, Bastet, Ra, Osiris, Quetzalcoatl, Triton, Sophia, Aphrodite, Zeus, Hermes, Janus, Baphomet, Coronzon, Dambala, Huitzilopochtli, Coatlaque, Naga, Oni. And while I'm sure there's plenty more, this is what I could find. Something I find interesting is I saw a few reports of people meeting humans and ascended masters who have long been dead. And let's not forget about all the ancient artwork that includes psychedelic mushrooms since there's quite a bit of it. Wait, who are you? My name is Master Shifu. Wait, are you human? Yes, I've come to tell you to breathe air. And see, you know, the subject matter is not very friendly with the advertisers. There's a chance this video might get demonetized, so if you want to support me on this video, feel free to pick up one of these t-shirts right here. Anyways, back to the video. Alright, so one last thing I should mention before I tell my encounter. I believe these entities to be outside of space and time, and the story will add some context to this belief, so now onto the most horrific experience of my life. So I was off of three tabs of acid and playing Counter Strike with my friends, and the map was Inferno and this hallway was looking like a circle. But suddenly things took a dark turn. My friend started to say things about me that he definitely didn't know. And it was only him talking to me, so keep that in mind. We had a whole team of people talking, and he 
started to specifically make fun of my thoughts of Fork Socket. They then proceed to make my second friend repeat the same thing over and over again in a glitched out type of way. They told me, You really think you know it all? You're so stupid to believe any of this reality is real. But it gets worse, they had the most horrific punishment to show me still. They froze my perception of time to make it feel as if time has stood still and I instantly thought, I really fucked up this time. And eventually the experience faded away, but something I should add is that friend who got possessed told me this nearly a year later. I sold my soul to the devil. Bro, there's not a single thing worth the price of your soul. What was the deal anyways? Did I get to be a part of Hell's Army? <laughs> That is the worst trade deal in the history of trade deals. But I must say, this experience really messed me up and gave me borderline psychosis for a while, but from my research, I've come to find out insanity is a common trait associated with unearned wisdom. There are some truths that I don't think we are meant to experience. We have a limited perception for a reason. After a ton of integration work, I realized something. It wasn't actually completely as negative as it sounds because for one, life's not very scary after you've experienced cosmic horrors, and two, here I am nearly five years later with a better understanding of what that experience really meant, and well in that moment, that entity seemed evil, when I really think about it, they were right. I was full of myself to think I understood it all. The scariness of the experience was due to the fact that my ego was being challenged, which as said earlier, the grip of the ego is the thing that brings hell. Why are you here? Because of my talking about God and everything, they might have thought that I was a little crazy. Do you think you are? No. But I understand how they felt because I wasn't making myself clear on it. It's very hard to... Ex I was trying to express something that was hard to express and I wasn't really capable of expressing it. I mean, I can have the relationship between myself and God, but I, it's a mistake to try to make other people feel the way I did, and that's what I was trying to do. Are these experiences delusion or was this something outside of us? I know a lot of people like the scientific approach of it's all in your head, which let's not forget, as within, so without, so both statements can be true at the same time. And the scientific method will forever struggle to measure this due to the nature of it, but the connection with the pre-established religious figures that people had no knowledge about makes me question that a bit. Which I do understand the scientific method in which these reports wouldn't be valid, but from a purely anecdotal evidence perspective, they really are convincing and there are some people who will give me the highest level of pure pressure for this as you will see in this video right here.